Did you know that up to 80% of people that undergo an amputation of their arm, leg, or even their finger or toe suffer from what's called phantom limb pain? That means that they actually feel pain in the amputated body part well after it's gone. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 25-year-old man who was involved in an auto accident and suffered crush injuries to both of his legs. Doctors did their best to try to salvage his legs, but he ended up losing one of his legs above the knee and the other one below the knee. He went through rehab and prosthetics and physical therapy, but he continued to suffer with debilitating leg pain. That pain went all the way down to his toes, but he didn't even have a leg. He takes methadone 15 milligrams three times a day to just try to control his pain. He's had injections and other conservative treatment as well, but nothing really seems to help manage his pain. So let's talk about what options you have in patients with phantom limb pain. But let's first talk about why you would even get that. It's more common in traumatic injuries because of the tissue damage and the neuroplastic changes in our nervous system. Our brain has a neuro matrix of how it interprets sensation from our body. If you close your eyes and you move your leg, your brain knows that your leg moved. This happens because your brain has developed this complex pathway that communicates with our peripheral nerves and goes through our spinal cord to tell our body how things feel. If you really wanna know the science behind it, I'll keep going. When we have disruptions of signals through injury, our sodium channels get upregulated and that leads to spontaneous discharges. That means our spinal cord senses increased pain in that limb and our brain has a hard time reorganizing it. Got it, so that means we need to trick our brain so it knows the extremity is no longer there. Essentially, yes. We need mind games. The good news is that a majority of people that do have phantom limb pain get better with time because of the brain does adapt. But what about those that don't? We often resort to medication options to help manage these symptoms, and that includes medications like Tylenol, opioid narcotics, GABA medications such as Lyrica or Gabapentin, and antidepressants that can also help with pain. Mirror therapy is often used to help trick your brain into thinking that the limb is present. You essentially put your good leg in the mirror and then you look at the mirror while you're performing movements and that tricks the brain into thinking that both legs are present. If you do this over a period of time, your brain can possibly rewire. If the patient fails conservative treatment, they may be a candidate for neuromodulation, which is often quite successful for phantom limb pain. A doctor can implant leads that go on top of the spinal cord that are connected to a battery, which delivers a high frequency impulse signal to the spinal cord, and that will reduce the sensation of pain. We use spinal cord stimulation all the time in patients that have had prior back surgery or nerve injury, and we also use it in phantom limb pain. Using Nevro's HFXIQ 10 kilohertz high frequency stimulation, you can reduce the amount of paresthesias that you'll feel in comparison to conventional spinal cord stimulation. There was a meta-analysis that was performed that compared high frequency stimulation to conventional spinal cord stimulation for phantom limb pain. This meta-analysis found that using high frequency stimulation as compared to conventional stimulation reduce a patient's pain by two levels on the pain scale. Because there's no paresthesias with this device, patients are more likely to be more compliant and have better long-term outcomes. Our patient underwent a spinal cord stimulation trial and subsequent implantation of the device and received more than 90% improvement of his pain at one year. Within a few months, he was off all of his opioid medications and only took Lyrica 50 milligrams twice a day. This gives him a better quality of life. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.